Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. Lawrence. Welcome to the first episode of Through the Horizon. I'm your host, Hans, the Patriot Brightwiser. First, I must say that all stats are brought to you by MaxPreps.com and ChapinFootball.com. This week, we covered Chapin at Bowie. Chapin has dominated Bowie since 2002, going 14-0. and Throughout their meetings, Chapin has averaged 42.8 points per game and only allowed an average of 8.9 points per game. Bowie has actually only had five games where they've managed to score more than seven points. That includes three games where they were blown out by the Chapin Huskies. Now, when you look at Chapin's offense through the air versus the Bears offense through the air, it's almost night and day. Their quarterback rating is what sticks out to me the most, 137.9 versus 72.3. They've also scored 12 more touchdowns through the air. So that's something to keep in mind when you're watching these guys is they don't just ground and pound, they can get it done through the air too. Now, speaking of ground and pound, the Bears have managed to do a lot more work on the ground scoring seven touchdowns. However, their four yards per carry is not going to hold up against the Huskies. Scoring nine touchdowns and averaging 8.9 yards per carry, these guys are almost unstoppable. See, when you look at the total offense, the Chapin Huskies and the Bowie Bears, why Chapin was a favorite going into this game. Now let's get to the film and see what happened on Thursday's game. After a quick score, making it 7 0, number 21, Patrick Morgan returns the kickoff. The impressive run back demonstrates his patience, waits for a lane, and takes off. Unfortunately, he slips up at the 40, and gives Bowie a great field position. Now, Bowie has a very athletic quarterback, Jermaine Carrasco. He's 6'2", 190 pounds. He's normally able to scramble and make plays if necessary, but with the Huskies' persistent defense, he's forced to scramble more often, and this makes it very difficult to get anything developed. Now here he attempts to hit number 10, Dominic Johnson, on a fade route, Chapin showing man coverage. Banks actually gets beat deep. Jermaine hits Dominic Lee perfectly in the corner of the end zone, but Johnson can't make a catch. Pressure created by the Chapin defense almost forces an interception here. Kevin Lincoln out of bounds. Chapin Huskies get the ball back on turnover on downs. Christian McKeever running the ground and pound, fighting for every inch of the six yard game. Roscoe struggled to hit the deep ball all evening. This time the ball was on target. It was broken up by who else? Number four, Mr. Lincoln. The Huskies eventually get the ball back on downs. Anthony Barr is pushed out of the pocket, manages to hook up with number 22, Mondarius Johnson. This little senior starts to almost dance with Bowie's secondary. Unfortunately, this is called back because of holding him. But not to worry, because on the very next play, number two, Christian McKeever will take it to the house, making it 27 to nothing. Now, with little time left, Chapin kicks off. Bowie is trying to fight back and at least get some points on the board. Unfortunately, they end up going one, two, three, and down. This time, Bart hooks up with number 22 on Darius Johnson again, and he is off to the races. Good, making it 35 to nothing. Here, number 66, Demarcus. Where I mean, Alex Golden puts some moves on the left tackle, forces Carrasco out of the pocket, and he's able to connect with his tight end for a 32-yard gain. This puts the Bears in the red zone for the first time in the game. But we finally put six on the board when Justin Mendoza dives for Chapin's defensive line. They try to go for two, but come up short when Mendoza tries to run off tackle is forced to bounce outside where he's met by more Husky defenders. The game is pretty much over, so Chapin sticks to the run game, hand off to the keeper. 
After a 13-yard game, Coach Hernandez says, do it again. This time, they give it to Daryl Battle, number 13, and he will go untouched to the house. However, because of another holding penalty, this will get called back. Chapin goes on to win at Bowie, 41 to six. This win takes Chapin to six and zero overall and three and zero in district. Now, every week, I'm going to do a segment called In the Huddle, and I'm going to go over a few of the key players that I feel were difference makers. First up, number 22, Mondarius Johnson. 5'7", 150 pounds. He's that tiny little guy that was dancing with Bowie's secondary earlier. We're going to show you that again here in a minute. 65 rushing yards on only 9 carries. 378 reception yards on only 25 catches. That's 15.1 yards per reception, people, and 3 touchdowns. I, I'm actually surprised that it's not more. All right, this is that play that we watched and enjoyed earlier. And I couldn't help in my mind, I'm thinking like, man, it's, it's like he's, he's listening to Michael Jackson or something. And he's just, nobody can see his headphones and his helmet, you know? <laughs> what I love about this kid is his patience. Just watch how he's able to just read the defense, see where they're going, see where they're going to be, and adapt. He takes this one to the house simply because he's able to read the defense and run right through them. Here's another example of his field of vision and ability to read the defense. Play action to the left, sees that he's got nowhere to go, so he bounces it outside to try and get a few extra yards. Next up. Number two, Christian McKeever. Plays both sides, wide receiver and defensive back. He's only 5'11", 180, but he's so versatile. He goes into week six with 120 yards on the ground on only seven carries. 124 yards on only six receptions, along with one receiving touchdown. I think that number should be higher, honestly. On the other side of the ball, he's got five tackles with an interception for 28 yards. I'm sure you remember this play from earlier. The reason I'm showing you this is to show his perseverance and how much he just keeps his legs moving. Look at this. Every time he gets hit, he just keeps moving. Like, you need at least two guys to take this guy down. It's a perfect example of why you can't leave McKeever open in the flat. One, two, a good block, three, score. It's as simple as that. Next up, number 66, Alex Golden, another kid you got to keep your eyes on. Plays both sides, offensive lineman, defensive lineman, as well as special teams. 6'2", 250 pounds, you can't miss him out there. Goes into week six with four assists, eight tackles. The reason I'm mentioning him as well as McKeever is these kids are only sophomores. They still got two more years to play, so it's going to be interesting to see what they can do. Here, Alex plows through the left tackle and is able to take down the running back for a loss of yards. Here, he puts some moves on the left tackle again, chasing Carrasco out. Unfortunately, Carrasco is able to capitalize on this. It just goes to show that Coach Hernandez really teaches these kids more than just football and running routes. It's obvious that he teaches them about discipline, about character, patience, and every single play that you watch proves that. I want to thank you very much for joining us on the first episode of Through the Horizon. We look forward to seeing you next week I'm covering Chapin versus Irvin at Chapin at Irvin and I have a feel at Chapin at Irving somewhere in the Northeast. Just want to give a little shout out to my little cousin Dalton also. Had two interceptions last week, changed the pace of the whole game and managed to help the Mill Creek Mustangs come away with the W. So good job Dalton. <laughs>